Okay, so now we are back to what's Jitetsuro, and uh, we have um, Yu Nusuka-san. She is a PhD student uh, from the University of Tokyo. So um, please, Nusuka-san. Thank you for the introduction, and I'm very glad to be here. Uh, thank you for uh, sharing your time with, with us. And uh, today I'm going to present on the concept of mono and koto in the philosophy of Watsuji Tetsuro. This presentation is actually inspired, inspired by the presentation of Professor Wawa last year in, Bruce, uh, in Barcelona, uh, dealing with the, his text, Watsuji text, Japanese and philosophical problems. And uh, at that time, I didn't really under, uh, know, knew, or I didn't really know about the concepts of mono and koto in Watsuji. And I wanted to know, I wanted to understand his, his, his concepts. Mono and koto. But it, it was indeed um, difficult than, more difficult than I expected, and uh, it is difficult to follow these tiny, tiny and so commonly, words, uh, common, commonly used words in the development of Watsuji's philosophy. And I'm not sure uh, how much I could succeed in this paper, to be honest, but I'll try. And please ask me any questions or give me any advice after the presentation. So, in the past, there were uh, some Japanese philosophers who discussed mono and koto. There are notably Watsuji Tetsuro, Hiromatsu Wataru, and Kimura Ben, etc. And according to Kimura, Watsuji was the first to focus on these notions. And Kimura, Kimura also considers these notions in relation to particularity of thinking in Japanese language. But, but I, as I will show soon later, Watsuji's notions of mono and koto were the result of his thinking both in German and in Japanese and, the, and German gave, actually gave him the first clue to start to consider this problem. On the other hand, it is relatively recent in studies of Watsuji's philosophy to focus on the importance of these concepts and there are still many aspects to be depicted. So this paper deals with the generation and structure of the concepts mono and koto from Watsuji's Buddhism studies to his ethics. So this is an overview of my presentation. And based on my study, there are mainly six phases in the development of Watsuji's mono and koto. Today, I'd like to show them chrono chronologically. So, the, so let's look at the first phase. Watsuji's mono and koto in his Buddhism studies. For Watsuji, the first and greatest achievement in Buddhist, Buddhist philosophy was the distinction between beings and dharmas. For, and Watsuji calls dharmas as foundations of phenomena. The dharmas are, for example, five aggregates, which explain that all phenomena are in certain forms and colors, in a form of being perceived, etc. And uh, it is here, uh, here is probably the first distinction between koto and mono in Watsuji's writings. It is the distinction between seeing, miru koto, that is the eyes of six sense spaces, and things that are seen, miraruru mono, the phenomena based on this seeing. Watsuji also considers that this seeing, miru koto, must not be an act of a subject within Buddhist study, uh, Buddhist philosophy of no self. He says, we consider it mirukoto not as das zeyende, those who see, but as das zeyen, to see. We should recall the position of no self, which excludes subject. And here you see what is his thinking in, Ger in German, the distinction of das zeyende and das Watsuji here refers Wilhelm Geiger, a German Orientalist. Geiger translated the Buddhist scripture, Samyutta Nikaya, and Watsuji had its second volume published in 1925. Watsuji obtained the idea of mono and koto, especially koto, from Geiger's Das Zenyen in German. 
In the first publication of Watsuji's Practical Philosophy of Primitive Buddhism in 1927, the use of koto was limited in some cases such as mirukoto, sin, and mirarurumono, things that are seen. But in the revised version of this book, Watsuji enlarged his interpretation to say that all dharmas are koto, which serve the basis of phenomena, mono. There, Watsuji's handwriting correcting these words from mono to koto in the book preserved in the National, National Library of, in Kyoto that were probably written after his study in German, uh, Germany. So, to know the reason for Watsuji's further emphasis on koto and mono, let's look at the second phase, the lecture notes. Uh, I, ah, sorry, sorry. Not yet. <laughs> Lecture notes titled Japanese and Philosophy conducted a half year later to his return to Japan. So, yeah, okay, let's see this movement. So, in this lecture, Watsuji gives a definition of koto. Considering several uses of koto, he concludes that koto is a word to express various phases or styles of practical and historical daily life, a state of being or living. And he explains it in relation to mono. Things, mono, are always in a certain state, sama, and cannot be without that state. On the other hand, a state, koto, cannot be abstracted from things, mono. <coughs> For example, we cannot have things moving, ugoku mono, without knowing moving, ugoku koto. But we cannot imagine moving, without having things moving. So, it's kind of mutually in, uh, dependent. Moreover, in, the lecture, in this lecture notes, the, the, the name of Heidegger appears. It is in a discussion comparing koto and German das with estet and das. I quote, There are cases where moving, ugoku koto, seeing, miraru, mira, miru koto, saying things, mono yu koto, doing something, unnun surukoto, are equivalent to German das with SZ. But seien is equivalent to das seien, and neither das ich ze nor das man zet. Since das is etymologically das, das of das seien and koto work in the same way. For das, refer Heidegger. End of quote. Uh, what, we see, what we see here is that what she identifies Heidegger, uh, sorry, German das with S Z and das with noma S and Japanese koto while holding the position of no self. On the other hand, it is interesting that Watsuji is referring to Heidegger's das with S Z here. It, it is, it was in, indeed the clue for Watsuji to evaluate and criticize Heidegger's philosophy. The corresponding phases of being and time in, is the section 29 entitled Being There as State of Mind, Befindlich Kite. There, Heidegger proposes a term, state of mind, that is our mode in daily life. <coughs> he says, uh, in the most indifferent and in inoffensive everydayness, the being or Dasein can burst forth as a naked that it is and has to be, that is east unto Susan, Susan Hat. The pure thus that it is, thus is east, shows itself, but the whence and the weaker remain in darkness. The being of the there is disclosed moodwise in its dark, thus this that it is is what Heidegger, Heidegger calls strongness, Gewohen Heit. So, Watsuji applies this idea of das and mood or koto and mood into his theory uh, and mood into his theory of climate. We can find this in his lecture notes, consideration of national character and the article climate. In the lecture notes, Watsuji focuses on the participation of climate, landscape, etc., as the environing nature in our self-finding. Here, Heidegger's thus plays an important role. I quote, Dasein always finds itself as finding itself in the mood that it has. In this moodness, Dasein is 
disclosed as that is passed to the existence to be in the existence. That means it shows itself as that it is and has to be. Thus it is and to sein hat. While whence and the vita remain in darkness. So his uh, what is his basically explaining Heidegger's analysis. But what she criticizes that if we regard the mood or self-finding as such an important state, we must clearly admit the participation of the environment environing nature that is not equipment. For example, a mood or a, a mood of fresh morning cannot be explained objectively but must involve involve participation of the things around us. In the following article, Climate, what she proposes is that climate is also a kind of things that are in the world or public, like technological artifacts. And what she suggests that the state of climate is also our state in the following logic, I quote, if we ourselves are those that find things that are in the world or public and that reveal ourselves in interactions with them, in other words, if we are nothing other than being in the world or public, the first form of ex existence is self-finding. So here, climate ex is explained as mono and our existence is explained as koto. But by examining the characteristics of human existence further, what is this starts considering two types of mono. We can find it in the article Understanding of Existence in Japanese. In this article, Watsuji discusses the particularity of human existence. He says that we ourselves, the foundation of koto, are also mono. And koto is our action and attitude. Then the fact that koto is koto is written in the kanji or word shows that or to say or shows that in a relationship of mono koto mono, mono that are ourselves as you mono has an understanding of koto in the structure of itself. In other words, koto is based on our self understanding or mono sorry based on self understanding of mono as found foundation of all koto. So now we have mono, koto, mono. And human being as mono is the foundation of all things. But again, by examining the characteristics of human existence, this order of mono, koto, mono is again transformed in the following article, person and humanity in Kant to situate koto as the foundation of all reality. In this article, Watsuji considers a person as mono realizing, realizing koto, that is, namely, humanity or subjective foundation. I quote, a famous distinction between a person, jinkaku, and a thing, zibutsu, zahe, is, distinct, uh, is a distinction between mono, which realizes personality or humanity, and mono, which does not. Watsuji considers Kant's personality or humanity as koto, which is neither a metaphysical substance nor mono. It is the subjective foundation of person and the source of all reality. Watsuji considers this koto or subjective foundation is without a differentiation of oneself and others. As you, as you expect, this leads to his understanding of human existence in Aidagara. So the last section, the article Ethics. Watsuji elaborates Kant's idea of subjectivity to his understanding of human beings that are koto, but also subjective mono. He points out that the koto preceding objective mono, like in the case where being beautiful precedes beautiful flower. While he considers this koto as human beings, he proposes that human beings are also another type of mono, I quote, subjective human beings can never be objective mono because they are koto, 
that make <coughs> objects as objects. Moreover, they are subjectively mono. Such mono are not bodies, nikutai, in the sense of objective mono, but yet bodies in the subjective sense. Hmm. What does this subjective body mean? Between subjective bodies, seeing, mirukoto, gains different characteristics. This is related to Watsuji's famous concept, Aidagara. I quote, when we see things, mono, our seeing, mirukoto, are not seen <coughs> as things. However, when we see a person, the scene, kono mirukoto, is seen from the person. In Aidagara, intention itself appears in a different in different characteristics from a relationship with things. For example, intention of seeing between people clearly shows the states of Aidagara in various ways of see various ways of seeing, mikata, such as seeing each other, staring, looking away, averting one's eyes, casting down one's eyes, etc. End of quote. So Aidagara gives the way of koto. So here, Aidagara or betweenness is explained by a division or ground, wake. Aidagara only stands in the form of being divided, not, uh, but also unified. Therefore, the fact that Aidagara practically exists, in, uh, the fact that Aidagara practically exists implies that it is practically divided or understood, wakatteiru, ma nihon in Japanese, wakatteiru means understood, but can be also uh, can also mean divided. And aidagara and practical division or shared ground, yeah, I translated is as it the wake as shared ground are synonyms. Existence as aidagara reflects itself as one koto, the structure of which is to be divided or un understood in a nexus of unity separation and unification. And this wake works in the phrase koto no wake. Watsuji's ethics is a study to reveal ground or division of subjective human beings, that is koto no wake. Study of human beings is now established as ontology of human existence. It is to term ground or division of subjective human beings, koto no wake, that are potentially involved in practical division or ground bucket as Aidagara into theoretical being there. So now I'd like to make conclusion uh, summary. This paper has shown the generation and structure of mono and koto from Watsuji's study of Buddhist philosophy to his theory of primate and ethics, focusing on the six phases. The resulting summary will be like this. First, in the study of Buddhist philosophy, Watsuji focused, uh, found the fundamental character of seeing, mirukoto, or things that are seen, mirarurumono, and those who see, miruko, mirumono. This understanding has been reinterpreted as koto, dharma, as foundation of all, of all mono phenomena. After encountering Heidegger's philosophy, Watsuji started to consider koto as a state of mono things, and also gained the idea of koto as a mood or self-finding or the self-finding of Dasein. This has led to his story of climate or food, that our koto mood or self-finding is determined by mono climate. Later, Watsuji started considering the particularity of human beings as mono. He gained an idea from Kant that person is mono, body that realizes koto, which is personality or humanity, the subjective foundation. This has led to his understanding of human existence of aidagara or betweenness as wake, division of koto, the subjective human beings. So, now, the one possible further discussion will be a relationship of mono with Watsuji's emptiness. While the examination of koto and mono was a search for the structure of reality, he already had an understanding of 
absolute not em uh, not nothingness but emptiness Absol absolute emptiness as a foundational basis in the Buddhist study in the article personality and humanity in Kant Watsuji says that there was no concept like emptiness that is subjective foundation of all the reality in the, in the philosophical stream where he can't belongs. So he struggles in the explanation of this subjective foundation. So the question will be the subjectivity of emptiness. In other words, it is the problem of contact or receptivity and activity or sensibility. That will be for the next occasion. Thank you for your kind attention. Okay, so thank you very much, Anutka san. And uh, now I believe we have around 15 minutes for discussion, so I would like to invite the other two presenters to come here. And, uh... Katsumori Makoto uh, from Akita to Japan. Um, uh, I have uh, some questions uh, for you in this case. Um, so, about uh, uh, what, uh, what was this uh, uh, reference to uh, Heidegger? Uh, uh, it seems to me um, uh, the distinction between Mono and Koto. Uh, uh, First, uh, reminds us of Heidegger's uh, distinction between uh, uh, Zion and Zionist, uh, but uh, you didn't include that. Uh, so uh, I wonder what what you think think about. And uh, another question is uh, uh, so. Um, um, as you may know, I, I have been doing uh, Hirobatsu Wataru after uh, Watsuji, and uh, Hiro, uh, as you as you said, Hiro, for Hirobatsu also, um, <clears throat> the distinction between Mono and Koto uh, is central. Uh, <clears throat> and according to Hirobatsu, uh, uh, the distinction between Mono and Koto uh, more or less overlaps uh, with the distinction between relation, uh, uh, between subject and relation. Mm -hmm. um, so, and he, he's on the side of uh, koto and uh, relation as against mono and sub, uh, substance. And uh, that correspondence uh, might be questionable. Uh, the correspondence between mono and koto and uh, subject and relation. Mm. So I wonder how uh, <laughs> we can uh, think about that possible uh, can, uh, correspondence from what is this point of view. Thank you very much for your very um, yes, clear and important question. Uh, first, about the Heidegger's Zion and Zionist. Uh, yes, I'm sure that Watsuji also uh, kind of had an idea of Heidegger's Zion, but especially Dasein, the difference between Dasein and Zionist. But um, I didn't really include because um, I just wanted to first uh, make a, a retail review, I mean, with the uh, because what she didn't really wrote about the uh, 
sign and sign death in relation to um, the mono and koto. So, but I'm sure that um, he was aware of these concepts. And uh, second question, Hiromatsu Watari, uh, mono and koto. So the, I would say, uh, first, what was this? What was this? Uh, um, what was its finding in Koto was about the no, no self, Muga, in Buddhist philosophy, and not really the relation. Mm -hmm. So that will be um, so that will be quite a um, big difference between what is this Mono and Koto and Hiromatsu Mono and Koto. So Hiromatsu really insists that yeah, Koto is about relation. So, but what is his first intention was not in relation, but no self. Mm -hmm. So, middle koto mm -hmm. is there. But a later, he, he, he came on to Aigagara. So yeah, but it's yeah. not really kind of, it cannot be. I think what is would say that uh, relation is too large, and uh, his koto is. Later, especially on human relationship, and it's the kind of human nature, and not really, it cannot be applied to anything like between things. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a question from Professor Isaac? Um, just, just a short comment. Um, it would be interesting since you've already um, examined this question in Watsuji to see what the changes he would have been made to it. Because he wrote also about Momo and Koko, taking into account his experience with um, uh, schizophrenic patients. Uh, and he was a disciple of, of Watsuji, as you know. I mean, uh, sorry, who? Who's? Kimura. Uh, Kimurabi, uh, Kimurabi. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, yes. just, just a thought, that's uh, all. Yeah, yeah just, thank you. Something I've always wanted to do, but you are better equipped to do it. <laughs> but my main question is for Roman. Yes. Um, I have this um, idea, and I might be wrong, that the idea of Shizen, referring to the natural world, only appeared in the 1880s in the Inoue Dictionary of Philosophy for the first time, and from there spread to Korea and China. And now, with that in mind, I was reading your quotations, and whether it's pronounced Jizen or Shizen, in both translations of existed, um, and both readings have existed, um, does it really mean the natural world in him, or does it not simply mean spontaneity? spontaneity? Um, in other words, as I can't find any evidence that Shizen ever meant the natural world. This, this triple meaning that we have in English, the essence of things, you know, the natural world, and spontaneity. I can't ever find that the natural world actually was used in Japan before the end of the 19th century. Uh, that's a big question. <laughs> um, I'm not sure I can answer it. Uh, this, this is probably the reason why there are so many, uh, as you know, there are so many translations for Shizen Shin Edo for the, for the title itself, uh, whether it's um, the uh, true way of the functioning of nature, or sometimes Shizen is uh, translated as the self-acting living truth uh, to emphasize the idea of spontaneity uh, a bit, uh, a bit more. Um, I think um, it covers in a way. Uh, it it does has uh, have of course this idea of spontaneity. But I think it also, uh, in a way, covers what we now understand by, by nature. Probably Shoiki's understanding of the whole realm is uh, different, uh, but I think it's, uh, it's there. And um, of course, for, for uh, spontaneity, you also have the argument that uh, in a lot of cases, he uses shitori naru or shitori su as the, the readings for, uh, for Shizen, this emphasizing the, the whole idea of spontaneity, um, and I'm still struggling with that. Uh, 
uh, it's a very complex uh, concept. In, uh, yeah, but I, I found interesting the, 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 the fact that uh, he is one of the first uh, thinkers uh, to view uh, nature as a totality, uh, as a, um, a, an organic uh, oneness, if, if, uh, if you want. It's not, for him, it's not a, um, a sum of just some component parts. It's not uh, just trees and mountains and human beings just put together as a, as a total, but it's a, a, a kind of organic uh, totality. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure this answers your question, but... Uh... Do you have another question? Yeah. yeah. My name's uh, Kyle Schultz. My question from Roman again. Um, thanks very much. I've never heard of Andy before. I'm quite enlightened, but one thing I picked up on in your the abstract, you mentioned that you kind of criticized Taoism. But to me, that seemed a very Taoist position. <laughs> yes. So that kind of might link into what James mentioned. You know, kind of a comment and then a suggestion as well. So you mentioned for looking perhaps for comparison of someone else who works with him not seeing so the scope of criticizing Tugagawa and Fukuzawa Yukichi as well. Like his early work focuses on to the, from a liberal perspective, criticizing more of the hierarchical structure of to the Edo society. So the more thinking. Thank you. Uh, yes, it's uh, it's true that when he criticizes uh, all these uh, ideologies or religions, uh, he's, um, in a way, he's a hypocrite because he uses the very means, uh, for example, he uses the, the parables which are uh, kind of Taoist um, uh, parables and uh, when he criticizes Shinto, for example, he uh, quotes from the Shinto texts, but his quotes are truncated. Uh, and not entirely accurate. So he kind of, uh, he is familiar with these ideologies, but he uses them just to prove his point. Uh, in a Thank you for Thank you. So question to Quentin. Um I was wondering if this, the relation between the vegetable, the vegetable world, or the plants, and, and, and the climate. I found that very, very convincing in a way. But I was wondering this: if we can't find in in Vatsuji, uh, the idea that whereas we are able to change the world of the plants quite easily, of course we can't start to uh, plant tea here, for example, or coffee, but we can, we have a lot of possibilities to change the, the vegetable world. But at least until recently, we had almost no possibilities to change the weather. You know? So uh, I wonder if that might also be a reason why Watsuji says that, uh, it's, uh, that climate is the, the, the objective thing. Yeah. Yes, that's true from a cultural point of view, but from, from a biological point of view, that's not uh, so true because the climate is the result of uh, of vegetal world. So the atmosphere, the temperature, the humidity, all these things that make climate, mm -hmm. in fact, are ruled by the types of vegetation. Mm -hmm. So from a cultural point of view, I think that's true, but from a biological point of view, this is not. And uh, even in the old time, we could influence uh, microclimate thanks to a uh, vegetable. For example, we can protect ourselves from wind mm. thanks to bushes or trees. So I think both are really intrinsically linked. But does what you mentioned any? About but the thing that it's is that it's never explicit about uh, the role of plants. So I wanted to make it more explicit because it's really important, in mm. fact. And uh, in all the examples, <coughs> it's implicit because there are a lot of uh, examples about plants and a lot of in a lot of perspectives. 
not only the climate one, but also the cultural one in a broad sense with agriculture or emotion, uh, the yes, the feeling of being Japanese, for example, is also rooted in the vegetation. So I want it to be more explicit because I think it it really plays plays a a genuine role. But I don't know <laughs> what do you think about that. <laughs> Just a real quick comment. Did you ever think of looking into the medieval um, Buddhist texts about the uh, Japanese Buddhist texts about the enlightenment of plants and trees? I, I don't know. This is the, the human enlightenment isn't complete until it includes the, the plants and the trees. Usually, they think of animals connected with uh, transmigration and so but um, inclusion of animals as, I mean, of plants and trees as part of the human experience of enlightenment it might be an interesting Okay, I, I don't know the text, but I'm not surprised because I, I realized that uh, it was um, more explicit in um, Japanese culture the, the way plants act. And in Occidental philosophy, it has been completely neglected. So, in fact, I'm working on uh, vegetal philosophy. That's the reason I was interested in Watsuji. Because it's not uh, easy to find text about plants in uh, the, the Occidental tradition. But I think that, as you said, in uh, Oriental tradition, their roles are clearer. So, thank you for the reference. Uh, I have a question. Uh, uh, for you. Um, um, Roman Pasha. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, if I understand correctly, uh, uh, for Andrew Shoeki, uh, nature, the concept of nature or the, uh, the way of nature um, is marked by um, the mutual uh, dependence of all things. Uh, uh, which is uh, a non-hierarchical, uh, reciprocal relationship. Um, there may uh, arise a question uh, on a meta level uh, about uh, the concept of uh, nature itself. So it seems to me uh, for a, um, a shoeki, uh, the way of nature is self subsist subsistence uh, without help of uh, anything else uh, 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 without help of uh, the world of uh, the private law so uh, there is a clear um, hierarchy between nature and non-nature uh, uh, the way of law and the, the way of nature and the way of private law so, is that correct understanding? Uh, oh. Yes, but he, in, uh, I don't necessarily um, think of it as a, as a hierarchy in the sense that oh. the, the world of the private law oh. is um, a sign of uh, a disease. It's, it's a deviation from, mm -hmm. from the world of nature. It's artificially created. Uh -huh. Not um, not necessarily as a hierarchy. Thank you. So I think um, we are running out of time already. So I'd like to ask. To, okay. So I'd like to thank you, uh, Roman, thank Kanta, and thank you, Luis Kasan, for three enlightening presentations and. Uh,